Hello. Today I am going to show you how to service a RCA SJ SKT 400 CED player. Um, it's relatively simple. You just need a couple little tools, screwdriver, some rubbing alcohol, etc. So, all right. So the first thing you want to do, let's set you down over here. Turn the player around. And you got two screws on here. You got one screw right there, one screw right there. Get yourself a little cup so you don't lose your screws. And you can take those two screws out. And then the top of the player simply lifts up in the back and then you pull it towards the back and it just lifts up the rest of the way. And then on the inside of the cover there's actually instructions on where you're supposed to grease and lubricate and then it also has a circuit diagram and has a parts list but none of these parts are available anymore obviously. So you can set that aside and as you can see this one is actually pretty darn dirty I got this one on eBay so to clean all that dirt off there uh, it's kind of an awkward spot to get to my toolbox but in my toolbox I have a small paintbrush and you can actually brush all that dust and debris off, get this thing all cleaned up. Look at all that. Alright, well there's more to do on that, but I don't want to make my video too long. So, next thing that you want to do is over on the right side of the player, with the player facing you, there's going to be this little gear assembly right here. This is going to be your loading motor and what it does is it turns this gear, it turns all that and sucks the disc into the player. So usually that belt in there will have turned to goo over time. So there's a screw right here and a screw right here holding this plastic plate on. You can take those off which I already have and replaced this but I'll do it just to show you. If you take those two screws out, normally I would put those in my cup, but since I'm just showing you. So then you can take this big gear off and there's actually a little cloth, little cloth washer on there. So don't lose that. That gear pulls right out and then you can pull this gear off too and that'll take your belt off. bit closer look. That's the belt right there. This gear right here comes off. But I've already changed it. So we'll leave that be. So this can go back on. Make sure that little that little cloth washer's on there. Then you can put your screws back in. Some people choose to use an electric screwdriver too, cordless. But I feel like just a regular screwdriver works just as good. So, alright, I'll get you a little closer here. This piece right here 
is what keeps the disc from sliding around when you put your when you pull the caddy out. So you can take that off by lifting it up and it just slides to the right and then slides to the left. And that comes right out. And then there's this bar right here, which is actually a grounding point for a couple places. That actually just lifts straight up as well on both sides. And you can kind of set it out of the way. Now there's going to be this rod right here that sticks out from the the wheel, from the uh, the platter. So in order to get that down, you have to plug the player in and turn the power on. And it will lower it enough that you can push it down and rotate this, rotate your platter around it. So I'll go ahead and do that. I've got my wires bundled. So if I plug the player in, and I push the power, now that I have the loading belt changed, it should automatically lower that down. And then you can come back over here and just unplug the player with the power still on the player. So the player is still powered on, but there's no power going to the player because I unplugged it. But see how this little thing moved down right here? Now you can just gently push it down the rest of the way in order to rotate your platter. Now you want to rotate your platter so that that thing that was sticking up is right between these two things and then it will lift off. And there's going to be two little levers back here that you got to slide out of the way. And then you can ease the platter back. And then there's a bar right here that you got to kind of lift the platter up over and then pull it towards you and it comes right out. Now see that little that little round washer type thing there? It's like a flat piece of metal that actually goes in the turntable shaft like underneath so that the spindle here rides on that. So don't lose that little piece. It's called a thrust plate. So usually underneath the platter is pretty clean but it never hurts to, you know, get around the edges and stuff, which I will do. But I'm just showing you how to do some general maintenance right now. So then for the platter, you want to get a tube of this stuff that's called Omni Lube. It comes in a little jar like this from CE Datum, and he writes Omni Lube 350 on it. And that's what you want to use to lubricate your turntable shaft. I usually wipe it off first so it's clean. And then you just want to get a little bit on the brush. And I usually start from the bottom and go to the top all the way around and then the end. Just like that. And then I usually clean the thrust plate off too. So, then you can take your thrust plate and it goes back in the little hole right here. And then you can, well this platter is really dirty so I'm going to brush it off real quick here. Man. This player must have been up in their attic for a while. Okay. And then you can ease it back in the same way it came out. Go all the way as far to the back as you can and then push it down past this metal bar and then gently find the hole. You gotta make sure those levers aren't in the way back there. It'll sit right down. And then you can simply just turn it until that pops back up. See how see how nice and easy it spins now? 
So, once that's done, you can put this back on. Well, actually, you can leave that off. There's one other thing that you can do, too. What I do is I usually will plug the player in. Come on. Okay. And then you want to take some rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. The higher percentage you can get, the better, because it'll dry faster. Uh, I get 91% at Target. Uh, you can get it most anywhere else, though, drugstore, wherever. But I transfer mine into this nice little jar to keep in my kit. And I get some Q-tips. And what you want to do is there's these rollers here. And what those rollers do is they suck the disc in and then spit the disc out. Those rollers will get dirty after, you know, so many discs and over time or just dust like this player has. So over here on this side, I'll try to show you, there's actually this little white switch right here. And since the player is plugged in, it's powered on right now. If you push that little lever, the rollers will start rolling. See them turning? So what I'll do is I dip my Q-tip in the rubbing alcohol and I use one hand to hold the little lever down and I simply just press the Q-tip onto the roller and let the machine do all the hard work for me. And I just spin my Q-tip and clean the rollers off. And there's a top roller on each side and there's a bottom roller on each side. Sometimes it takes multiple Q-tips because these things get really dirty. And then do the other side. And they're easier to get to without that, that grounding bar in the way. So then once that's clean, I'm going to power my player off. I'm going to put this back. Just pushes right in like that. And I'm going to put this back. Goes in this side. Goes in the other side and then goes down just like that and then all that's really left is greasing so what you want to use for greasing they make this product called phono lube it actually has a number uh, let's see 10-1223 and you take a q-tip And you want to just put a little bit, oh, where's my lens there? A little bit of this on your Q-tip. And wherever you see like red grease on these gears, that's pretty much where you want to grease. So you can just try to fill it in wherever that red grease is. like that and then there's actually a couple of points that you want to check before you go ahead and you know try to use your player there's a gear right down here you get a pointer this gear right down here if you can see it this 
big fat one. That's called the third reduction gear and it's got these little plastic spindles that come off it and connect to this larger gear. And the point behind that is if the system like jams up and stops those little spindles will break and it'll keep more stuff from breaking. It's basically a fail safe is what it is. And then back here if you look on the other side this gear right here will have this little white stick that comes out of it that has this metal rod that goes through it. A lot of times this white stick will break off. I forget the technical term for it. You can look it up on CE Datum's website, but but anywho, so you want to check and make sure both those are good, which they are on this player, and we should be all lubed up and greased up, and other than the dirt that I still need to brush off, it should be ready to go. So all you have to do is plug it. Plug in the uh, your AV cables here, left, right, video, and turn my TV on. should be able to power this baby on. Please load disk. And then you get yourself a test disk. Grab one off the shelf here. Oh. Space Hunter Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. You insert it into the front of the player. Those little wheels will grab the disc, suck it in, pull the caddy back out. This bar that we took out, that keeps the disc from sliding around. And then we should, oh look at that, it starts on zero even. They almost never start right on zero. That, okay, I'm rather impressed right there. Another thing we can do is when the player's turned off and everything, you can actually move this gear right here. It shows you on the, uh, the bottom of the cover how to do it. But it's this top white gear right here. You slide that over and your stylus arm will come out. And you can pop your stylus arm cover open and take the stylus out and use a little isopropyl alcohol and a really fine like artist to uh, artist paintbrush and just brush your stylus to get all the dirt and debris off it. But it looks like it plays good. It's got a nice stable picture. High speed scan works. Visual search works. High speed rewind works. It appears we have Visual rewind works. Whoops. I didn't mean to do that, I was trying to pause it. My bad. But I'm sure pause probably works too, so. And then you slide your disc back in. Take it out. And then you can power it off. And if you take this bar back out, and this is the gear I'm talking about right here, this little white gear that's right on top, you can actually slide that back like this, and it'll move your stylus arm where you can access it. Which it looks like this is another thing that needs to be brushed off because man that's pretty dirty. 
You can see this is your stylus hatch. You can take a little flat tip screwdriver like that and you put it right underneath there and you just pop it open and it lifts up and it actually comes all the way off. Okay, that's a that stylus is actually marked JG6, which means I sent that in a CE datum and he cleaned it for me or rep or repaired it, I don't know which, but it's a working stylus back from CE datum. But yeah, to get the stylus out, you just kind of lift back slightly and then up from the front and then the back up just like that. And you can see there's a little there's a little copper wire in there that's called the fly lead and a lot of times that'll get corroded and be broken and then your stylus won't work in which case you can send it into CE datum and they'll go ahead and fix your fly lead and check it and clean it and make sure everything's good and send it back to you and I think a repair is like 35 bucks but I don't know if that just covers the new diamond tip or if that includes fly lead or what but But yeah, you can see the little, the tip of your stylus is that black line right there. And then on the very tip of that, there's a diamond head, and then there's a metal plate that's connected to that fly lead. And that metal plate is what actually reads the data off, or well, it doesn't read data off the disc, but it makes the capacitance connection to get the information off the disc, essentially. Transfer it to microchips, computers, and whatever, and yeah. Glorious 19... 80s technology. So, I'm going to put it in, you kind of just do reverse order where you put the back in first and then you put the front down. And you just make sure it's in there nice and snug. And your door plate can go back on. And you can take that little screwdriver and pop that little metal wire back over your door plate to hold that shut. And then you can just power the player on and it will automatically slide your tone arm back in, your stylus arm. But I believe that is pretty much a full service job on this bad boy. Uh, there's a couple other minor things that you could check too. Uh, if you get a Star Wars disc, you can fast forward from the beginning of the disc all the way to the end of the disc and just kind of play like every five minutes or so and make sure that the picture is not grainy or fuzzy through any part of it because you might have a, a turntable height issue. The turntable height is actually power this off. Turntable height is actually adjusted from the bottom side of the player. If you turn your player on the side gently and go around to the back side there's this little triangle with the electric bolt that little hole right there in the middle of that nut you can fit an allen wrench in there and there's actually a little I want to say nut inside that nut the allen wrench will turn and it'll cause the 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 platter is actually resting on the thrust plate and the thrust plate is resting on that nut. So as you do turn the uh, the Allen wrench it raises that nut up and down which causes your platter to raise up and down. And you can go on the CD Magic website and it'll tell you which direction to turn and how many turns to turn it in order to adjust your player. But other than that not much else to do on here. I'm going to go ahead and finish cleaning this one up with my paintbrush, get all the dust and everything out of it. And then I usually take some Windex and wipe all this junk off. It's got a bunch of grime and dirt and stuff. And then it should be good to go. I hope you enjoyed my video. And as you can see, they're really not that hard to maintain and work on with very minimal tools and very minimal knowledge. So thanks for watching.